Hi, Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by. You know, there's no question that Intel's Core i7 processor is currently the fastest desktop computing chip on the planet. However, until now, Intel hadn't brought that technology down to the mobile market for notebooks. Well, today we're going to show you one of the first Core i7 mobile notebooks to hit the market. We're going to take a look at a Clevo-based Core i7 notebook. We're going to fire it up for some quick tests, and then we're going to tear it down to take a look inside. Sound like fun? Let's get to it. The Clevo Style Note model W870CU is a 17-inch desktop replacement notebook that came pre-configured to us by Clevo with a Core i7-920XM 2 GHz mobile processor, 4 GB of DDR3-1333 system memory, and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 280M mobile graphics processor with 1 GB of graphics memory. Also in the machine is an Intel 80 gig solid state drive, DVD multi-recorder drive, and Intel integrated wireless LAN, and gigabit ethernet. Also the machine was pre-configured with Windows 7 Ultimate for our testing. On the left side of the machine there's a modem jack, a TV tuner coaxial cable jack, a flash card reader slot, Firewire port, USB 2.0 port, and our DVD combo read-write drive. On the right edge of the system is a Kensington lock port, DVI output port, an eSATA port, express card slot, USB 2.0 port, and various audio inputs and outputs. And on the back side of the system, behind this hatch, is an HDMI high-def video output port, a power jack port, a pair of USB 2.0 ports, and a gigabit ethernet LAN port. Alrighty then, so the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's take a look under the hood of this Intel Core i7 mobile-based notebook by Clevo. To get access to the component area, first we'll remove the battery, and we've taken the liberty of removing screws from this bottom uh, cover panel here. We'll pull that off. As you can see, we have unfettered access to virtually all the major subsystems and components in this notebook. And here you can see we have a solid state drive in this bay. Here is a vacant 3G wireless bay. It doesn't have a card in it. Another spare vacant uh, drive bay. And the two major processing plants here, the GPU processing plant and the CPU processing plant with their heat pipe and radiator, uh, heat sink assemblies and these turbine fans. And of course, we've got four gig of DDR uh, 1333 system memory here on these small SODIMs, uh, small outline DIM modules. Okay, so on this side of the system is the GPU or graphics processing unit subsystem. We're going to go ahead and remove the turbine fan that keeps this radiator cool. We've pulled the screws from it already. And we'll pull this copper cold plate and heat pipe and radiator assembly off the GPU itself, the graphics processor, to expose and NVIDIA GeForce GTX 280 mobile GPU. This is the actually the uh, copper heat sink and radiator assembly. And right there is the GPU and one gig of GDDR3 graphics memory. All right, so next let's take a closer look at Intel's Core i7 mobile processor. We'll remove the fan assembly away from the heat sink area. We've already popped the screws on that. We've also popped the four retention screws on this copper cooling plate and the heat pipe and radiator assembly can come right out. And there you have it. There's Intel's Core i7 mobile processor and a pin grid array 989 package. This is a socketed device, 989 pins. And by comparison, we'll carefully drop down this Intel Core i7 desktop chip. This is a high-end desktop chip in a LGA 1366 LAN grid array package. It's very different than the mobile chip. As you can see, the desktop chip actually has a heat spreader mounted on top of it, and the mobile chip has a bare die exposed to its heat sink. Also, the desktop chip is an LGA package, a LAN grid array package. So this is a LAN grid 1366 package. And you can see there's an array of 1366 pads on the bottom of the device. There's no pins on that processor. The socket itself in a desktop has the pins. Okay, and the closest cousin to the Clarksfield Core i7 mobile processor, codenamed Clarksfield, these are all Intel code names, is this 
Intel Linfield Core i7 desktop chip, a little bit smaller. This is the mainstream Core i7 processor in an LGA 1156 package. There's 1156 pads on the bottom of this device, okay? And as you can see, actually the bottom keep out area where the die is mounted on this device is very similar. It's a very similar die to the Intel Core i7 mobile processor. Now finally, what you're not seeing exposed here is Intel's PM55 Express Companion I.O. chip, which is essentially a south bridge that supports up to eight PCI Express 2.0 by one lanes for expansion, up to six three gig SATA ports with Intel matrix storage technology, which also supports RAID, up to 14 USB 2.0 ports and Intel high definition audio. Incidentally, the processor itself also supports a by 16 PCI Express 2.0 link to graphics, which allows the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 280M you see here to bolt up directly to the processor. Our test vehicle for the Intel Core i7 mobile processor is Clevo 17-inch Style Note Notebook. This is a big, beautiful desktop replacement machine with a 17-inch LCD that supports a native screen resolution of 1600 by 900. On the desktop, we're running Cinebench, which is a 3D rendering benchmark utility capable of loading down the processor 100%, and Intel's genuine processor clock speed monitoring widget for Windows, and CPU ID TM monitor, which will allow us to monitor clock speed on a per thread basis. Remember, this is a quad core Core i7 mobile chip that also supports Intel's hyper threading technology for a total of eight threads of available processing resources for multi threaded applications four cores, two threads per core. We're going to demonstrate for you next Intel's turbo mode technology, which will dynamically clock gate the processor cores based on workload and threading requirements from the application. Initially, Cinebench will load up the workload into memory, and in doing so, it will invoke a single-threaded mode type of processing requirement, and then it will get into a multi-threaded processing requirement. Here we scale to three gigahertz when we're loading that workload into memory, and once we begin to actually work on the workload over here, you'll see eight threads of processing for this rendering uh, coming through. Once we begin to render that image across eight threads, all cores, the clock speed scales back down to two gigahertz. This is obviously to manage power consumption and heat and to invoke stability rather than overclock uh, under a heavily multi-threaded heavy workload application. So this is a demonstration of Intel's turbo mode technology dynamically clock gating on a per core basis with eight thread multi-threading hyper-threading technology invoked as well. We hope you've enjoyed our little nickel tour of Intel's Core i7 mobile processor and this hot new Clevo gaming notebook. Make sure you check out our full review with all the benchmark data. I'm Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by.